Hi there, Neil Clark here from Falkirk Piping, www.falkirkpiping.com. Welcome to the channel. Videos contained here are designed as aid memoirs for my pupils, although they're completely free for anyone to use. If you're benefiting from the videos, please subscribe to the channel. This is also free. May I also ask that you consider supporting my chosen charity, Parkinson's UK, by donating to my Just Giving page. The link to that page may be found in the comments box below this video. A little bit more talking now, uh, this video is a tutorial on aspects of the Pibroch Caber Fe Gebra, specifically the movements, the embellishments involved in that. Uh, and they're aimed at a student who doesn't have a lot of experience in uh, Pibroch embellishments and Pibroch playing. So we're just going to have a look at it. Before I start, Caber Fe Gebra by Donald MacLeod. It's a bit of a difficult Pibroch to get music for. Uh, correct music for actually. Uh, I'm working from a National Piping Centre manuscript which was given to I think a uh, winter school in 2019 and that's entirely correct. There's also, uh, you can find the music for it in here in the Queen's Own Highlanders uh, book. This is of course out of print and on top of that there are mistakes in the Pibroch in this book here. Um, it's not on the Pibroch Society website at the time of uh, recording. This is uh, 2021 and it's not actually on the Pibroch Society website. Otherwise, I would say go there and join the Pibroch Society. Join the Pibroch Society anyway. Uh, there, you can download an MP4 from Roddy McLeod, Pibroch. There's a very good recording on YouTube, uh, which is Angus McCall at the Ipswich Piper Society, and I'll link that in in the comments box below. There's also a, a demonstration of the tune on practice chanter by myself, which should more or less be it. We'll also talk about, uh, we'll name certain movements. This little booklet here is very handy. It's by, well, it's actually by John McCle McClellan, and uh, is offered on the, the web for sale by Colin McClellan and uh, it's Colin McClellan Reads I think his website is. It's great, it's, it's pocket size, it covers the movements and their names and I think there's also a CD player so a CD goes with it so that's that's well worth getting. Uh, it's, the, it's the most convenient idiot guide for Pibroch uh, embellishments and their names that I've come across yet. Although, of course, there are lots of other ones. So, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'll play the first line of the, the ground of the Pibroch here. So... Now, we are going to cover the actual embellishments involved here, but the best advice, John, I can give you in uh, looking at Pibroch for the first time is flush your head of a lot of the sort of preconceptions involved when you're coming off of light music, because you're going to look at some, uh, for example, this first thing we're going to talk about here, you're going to look at it and think, well, that's some kind of crazy doubling on low A. It's not, of course. Uh, if you look closely at the embellishment, you'll see that the G component, the high G component, is a demi-semi-quaver, but the E is a full quaver, and just to make matters a little bit more ridiculous, the E is actually played longer than that. That's your first note in the tune. We almost can sit on that E as long as we want. So it's not some uh, embellishment, it's G grace note to E, hold that E, and then down to the low A. Now, depending on how your mind works, you might have to go through that a few times just so you're not making your way through the Pibroch and trying to play a Dublin or something like that. G grace note to E and down. Now, that doesn't actually have a specific name. It's just a G grace note to an E, hold that E and then down. But it's very common. That particular uh, movement there is very, very common indeed in Pibroch. So again... Now, moving on from there, 
In the middle of bar one, we have a grip to C. That's pretty uh, self-explanatory. It's played as usual. But then uh, moving on, uh, the last note in the bar has another grip to C, but we have a C just before it. Now you encounter that in the likes of uh, Glendoral Highlanders. Uh, uh, if that's the way you play it. So. So the first C is very, very short, and then we come in with the grip after that. But you will have done that before in light music. So the first bar then... You'll also see that the F there before that C grip, it's written as a, a semi-quaver. And of course it gets just a little bit more... Um, we Short notes especially, we... 90% of the time we probably don't hold them, uh, uh, cut them, sorry, we probably don't cut them as much as is shown in the notation. There are no real rapid notes in most Pibroch. So, we come to the first then, in bar two here, of line one, we come to the first embellishment that you asked about, and it's a cadence to C. There are in general, in general, Two cadences, the most common are a cadence to C and a cadence to B. Just for those uh, that are looking in on this, cadence is spelt Charlie Alpha, Delta, Echo, November, Charlie, Echo, Cadence. So, same thing again, if you have a look at the, the actual embellishment, you'll see that the G is, that's a G grace note, it's a demi semi quaver. The E is shown as a full quaver and again can actually be held a little bit longer through, in this case, a full D to the C. Now you will have played this in light music, Kilworth Hills. That's what's in the music, so uh, yeah, you've played this in light music and probably haven't thought too much about it. So it's a cadence to C, G grace note to E, through the D and down to the C. Now, we'll just take the opportunity while we're here uh, and we're on cadences. Let's do the cadence to B as well. C is quite uh, self-explanatory. G grace note to along E through the D and down to C. When we come to the B, however, uh, what we need to bear in mind is that the, the D component of that cadence is an embellishment. So it's a G grace note to the E through a single D finger and then down to the B. So that's your two cadences covered then, so... And we need to hear that D, it's like a rolling effect going down there. So that's, that's your cadences. You asked about that and that's pretty much them covered. So let's uh, travel down to line two now in the ground. Um, a little bit about that, uh, we, we, we don't talk about parts in Pibroch, we have the ground or the urler, and contained within each variation or ground, we talk about lines, if we're lucky and we're not looking at for perhaps the guards book, where everything's crushed down to make it fit the typeset, uh, we have generally three lines, the first line in this case is repeated uh, in each variation, that's a generalisation. Uh, but we, we talk about the variations and lines, not parts. Uh, so, we're in line two of uh, the ground or the urler. And the first thing we're going to have a little look at here is the idri. That's Echo Delta Romeo Echo. And it's sort of like the second half of a Cran Luth. In the bar here we've got... Now, just what's worth noting, the same movement, if you came from a lower note, it would just be known as a, as a DRE, D-R-E, Delta Romeo Echo. But coming from a note which is higher, down to the E, it's called an E-DRE, in the way to remember, it's, I suppose you play the E before it. 
So what we're doing, second half of a cram with I suppose, in this case, let's come off the F the way it is in the tune. E, A, F, single finger only, A, E. And we finish on the main note. The main note is the themal note, T-H-E-M-A-L. Uh, so that we hold that note in this case, and in most cases, but certainly in this case. So again, putting that back into the tune, and we encounter it in bar two as well. Pretty much us, us for that line. Uh, moving further along the line in bar three, we come off the e, the F there, and we have yet another Idri. So uh, that's pretty much it for the grounds. We'll just uh, we'll just zoom along to line three bar three here. Uh, because we, we, we encounter the, the same movement, but in this case it's known as a dree because we're coming up from the C. So we've got... That's a huge F there, by the way. But it's the same movement, so it's E, A, F, A, E. Just like the second half of a Cran Luth. Uh, let's have a look at uh, variation one which is uh, it's not entirely unusual. Usually you'd, you'd get a collection of grace notes, uh, but this, this one here is, starts with a, a torluth. Now, all the torluths in this tune are going to finish on low A. Uh, so it's really getting the balance of, uh, of the phrasing of, of this variation, which is the big thing. There's nothing particularly... Uh, difficult in it, but it is, it is getting this swell. So we've got... to be there at the end. So what you what you heard there with regards to the actual Torluith uh, itself, a long theme will note before the Torluith. Take your time executing the Torluith, make sure it's correct. Don't really go for any sort of machine gun Torluith. A nice uh, open deliberate Torluith. As soon as you hit the low A in this case, the final low A of the Torluith, we jump off that low A and in the first one, for example, we're doing the D grace note to C. Now, the D grace note to C after the Terluth, it should almost sound like it's all the same movement. So we've got... And a good, a good clear uh, D grace note up to the C. Be careful not to catch. Don't go... And, and put the A down before the D comes up for the... The grace note. Uh, then we're looking at a sort of pendulum effect. Hane, hinto. Now again, semi quavers, uh, but we, we don't want. We don't want that. Just something nice and round. Again, have a listen to the recordings, particularly uh, Angus McCall. So. Uh, I'm over the page here, just excuse me a minute. So we're on to the, the Torluth singling and doubling. So, now, in the Torluth variations, I'm, I'm going to go through this. The singling uh, in this P-Brock here, there are three Torluths per bar and also per phrase, per phrase actually, because the phrases in this P-Brock do tend to match the bars. Um, and the pause note is a D grace note to C. Again, all the Tor Lewis are going to finish on low A. I'm just quick, quickly scanning. I don't think you have a D Tor Lewis in certainly the singling. So... Excuse the 
dog. He's just seen one of his friends out the window there. So, again, that same phrase in there. As soon as we're finished, the terluer, we get straight off onto the G grace note to C there, which is the start of the next terluer, the C terluer. So, One thing to just be careful of, because uh, in the previous variation we had a lot of D grace notes here, and in the pause note here we also have a D grace note coming in at the end. Just make sure that you start all your torluths and, and your theme note, your first theme note, uh, with a G grace note. That's the, the you can very often find that the D grace note slips in. So that that's the singling. There's there's not uh, really an awful lot to say about that, you're going to finish each line with a cadence to B and then a low G grace note to uh, low A. The doubling of the terluth, we still have to build in this phrasing, so it's one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, but as long as you do that, really the rest of it is just one enormous 32 terluth exercise. Um, Maybe something to mention during the doubling is you'll hear it's possibly said that the doubling should be faster than the singling. That's not necessarily true. It's okay if we give the, the impression that the, the doubling is maybe a little bit um, faster, but what we what we tend to do is we, we shorten joining notes, you know. So that, that's also a thing for to remember for the singling is don't be going too fast in the singling because you do want to give that subtle impression of moving a little bit faster in the doubling. So the the Torluth doubling, no great uh, no great uh, surprises in here. Just one other thing on the doubling, really, uh, at the end of the phrases, uh, particularly at the very, very end of the uh, the variation, sometimes people forget to put that last doubling in. You've got 32 of the things to put in, uh, and every themal note must be followed by a torluth. But that's 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 fine. Now, uh, the, Cranluth, the Cranluth singling here, this is where uh, a lot of the confusion comes in, and it's really very simple, actually. Um, I'm going to play uh, the the first line here. Uh, what I would like you to pay attention to is at the end of every bar, you'll see uh, what is shown as a D grace note. And please listen to what I'm going to be doing here. It's not a D grace note. It's actually a cadence to C, B, or whatever. So like this. <laughs> Before we explain that that cadence there, uh, let's have a look at the Cran Lewis because uh, this, this might be one of the things you asked about. I'm not sure, but uh, the, the, I think you probably have done this actually. So we'll just uh, take our time. And again, thankfully, there are no D Cran Lewis involved in this. So there's a couple of ways of explaining the Cran Lewis. Uh, the first one is to explain it as a, tor a tor Lewis with two additional movements at the end of it. Uh, if we do that, if we look at the first one, so all you have, there's your tor luth, and on, at the back of that you have to do an F grace note, single F finger down to A, and finishing an E, so there's, well I suppose there's three extra notes there, but... So 
Sorry, so I need, so I need to start on, sorry. <laughs> Now, when I went through that, what you heard me doing, that's the phrasing that you're going to do as well. Just as we uh, we came off the uh, the last part of the Torluth and moved straight on to the G grace note on the next theme note, that's what we're doing with this Cranluth as well. These are standard Cranluths. Uh, by definition, there are another uh, three types of Cranluths. There are the Fosgilt, the Brebach, and the Cranluith Amach, we don't really need to concern ourselves with that for this tune. So, uh, let's have a look at the first three Cranluiths in the Cranluith singling here, uh, and then we'll go over what you're going to do to get to that C. So... <laughs> Now this is this is what I'm talking about by saying get your light music reading head sort of wound back a wee bit and just attack this with an open mind because that D grace note there, that looks like a D grace note but you can't do a D grace note, it's impossible. So you might actually be sitting there thinking that's really easy, why is he, why is he going on about this so much? I'm going on about it so much because... 70% of people get this wrong the first time. So hopefully it's, it's going okay. So this is your phrasing. It's A, Cranluith, C, Cranluith, E, Cranluith, cadence to C. Now, coming off the E, Cranluith, we talked about getting off the Cranluith and onto the next theme note. When we come off that third Cranluith, which is the, the E, Cranluith there, just a little pause to get us through the D for the cadence there, it's the end of the phrase, we're phrasing the, we're phrasing the tune. So, let's have a look at the... Uh... Okay, and that's really pretty much everything covered that uh, you want it done. The Cranluith doubling again, 32 Cranluiths in a, in a row. I'm scanning through this because I was sure why. Aye, right, so the cadence is in every bar in line one here. In line two, uh, we're not, we're in, in two of the bars, for example, bars one and bar three, we're not going down to, to a note in the bottom hand. So it is in fact a G grace note to E. Don't look at that and think, oh, that's some crazy cadence. No, it is actually what it looks like. It's a G grace note to E. So you've got... <laughs> Ah, sorry. Helps you any? Th think the, the cadence cadences that we've done before the C and the E, the, the B cadence, they all come off an E. Now, if you think about it, uh, we're finishing a cranluith on the E, so this cadence comes off the E as well. Um, I think pretty, pretty much think that's us. Uh, cranluith doubling. Please just take your time. Remember and uh, play the cranluith at the end. There's a low A shown there. Don't come off that and go straight back to the, the, the start. Now, what we do when we're finished the Cranluith doubling, we go back to the ground and we play the first line of the ground, the first line only and not repeated. So, just to finish it off, so... <laughs> Again, right at the end there, hold on to that uh, E at the end of the Cranluith, uh, because that's you finished, you know, that's a, that's a statement. 
when you're uh, if you you take this to uh, to uh, competing, you won't be judged on in most cases anyway. Certainly in Scotland, uh, you won't be judged on your first line of the the ground when you go back into it. And that's when the pencils start scratching. Uh, but but you, you always go back into the first line. The only other thing I'd say for you uh, in this Pibroch. And any Pibroch has practiced the transitions from variation to variation. Uh, we sometimes have pause notes at the end of, uh, well, the end of phrases, but certainly the end of variations. In here it's really easy because you've got the cadence. <laughs> So it's, it's, you don't even have to think about it, they're built into the tune. So there's no guessing, you, you know where the pause notes are. But still, practice the uh, transitions. It's really, really important not to be getting to the end of the line and thinking, ah, oh, how do I move into the next uh, variation? So that's it. Uh, I hope that covered everything uh, to anyone else who this isn't actually designed for and managed to watch it this far. Uh, I hope that kind of made sense and I hope you can source a copy of this. I looked at Pipetune CA, it wasn't there. Uh, Queen's Own Highlanders, as I say, is out of print. Um, and I do have a copy, but I can't send you it because I'd be breaking copyright. So good luck. Uh, any ideas, please let me know where you got a copy of uh, Caberfe Gabra. Uh, just lastly, the spelling C A. B A R not Caber Fay Caber Caber Fay. All right, John. I uh, hope we're all's well out there, mate. And uh, we'll see you. I will see you sometime. It will happen. Right. Cheers. <laughs>